Chook's Tactical. Always Chook. Always Tactical. All right, guys. Uh, our channels are coming together again. Chook with Chook's Outdoor Adventures. And uh, Corey from Hammer Hard Outdoors. We wanted to do a uh, video on um, civilian application of like some sort of military surplus tactical gear um, and its uses. So his is probably more practical than mine. I just collect stuff to, to be ridiculous. But uh, let's let's go through yours and, and see what you got. All right. So, um, you know, like anybody who does watch my channel, <clears throat> I'm in the military and all that stuff. However, I don't claim to be the expert on pretty much anything. I just know my own little small little part of the world. Um, however, uh, what I kind of want to do as a video at some point is addressing a lot of um, what people think they need and what I think people probably actually need and kind of just realistic setups when you kind of maybe if you want to set up a, a gun belt or a plate carrier or something. Um, but my thoughts are is um, ammo and medical stuff is for a civilian, um, whatever, whatever you call it, whatever reason you have for owning one of these things. Um, uh, this one was actually a hand-me-down that a buddy of mine gave me that I kind of made um, it work for me. And I'll kind of go into that in a little bit, but um, I see, you know, a lot of people, they watch like Grand Thumb and stuff like that, and they think that they need all the same stuff he does, but, you know, he's also in the military and does stuff, you know, like that, so you kind of have to know when to shut the, the military side off and just kind of maybe, you know what I mean, like a, a apply, because otherwise what it, what you end up happening is you get this... Uh, plate carrier that weighs like a ton because you have a bunch of stuff that uh, you probably will never really need and stuff and you have all the stuff you do need tucked away all the way in the back or something like that but anyway I'll go into this one this one's a diamond back um, okay diamond back uh, plate carrier this um, after my buddy gave it to me he based um, I kind of looked it up to see if there was anything I could get um, for it online I think this company uh, went out of business, and I mean, I think way back in the begin uh, beginning, about the 2000s and stuff, this company was kind of big, they had a lot of stuff. Um, all, it, all it really is is, and he made some modifications, and then I went and I made some modifications myself. I think when this thing, he originally bought it, it had some, uh, just like a, a little piece of um, Cordura or whatever and stuff, were probably like one of those big plastic buckles. And it looked like he cut that off. And I remember when I was deployed with him, he had mentioned something that he bought these um, with it. They're basically uh, it's ballistic soft armor. So it's just uh, like a bendable kind of thing. You can't put those the heavy duty uh, little side plates in them. And I'll kind of get into that um, too, because I think um, it kind of seems like people are using a lot less, you know what I mean, in their plate carriers. And I kind of like that um, kind of thought. So. This is probably going to stop um, all your shrapnel, you know, if your bullet fragments or the bullet that your, you know, whoever fires at you fragments, it'll protect your, your little, uh, the sides of your lunch muscle there. And then um, on the other side as well. What plates do you get in there? Um, these ones are, he also gave me the plates too, because he's, I think it's just downsize and stuff. They're, uh, they're just the, um, the thick uh, level three ones. So I think they'll like, if I remember correctly, level three is only really good to like nine mil or something like that. It's mostly for shrapnel. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, know, I think you have the metal plates in there, right? Yeah, I get the steel ones. Yeah, so that's something that a lot of people are doing. And, I mean, if you shoot 500 steel, it's, it's going to stop pretty much, you know, like most rounds. And, I mean, I'm saying that, like, for just, like, their uh, AR-500 steel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, you can shoot that stuff all day. Um, yeah. yeah, and you want to have that coating and stuff. A lot of people mention that because that coating is what's going to kind of absorb a lot of the... Uh, um, the splash or whatever they call it, like with the, the bullet um, fragments out. This one, I, like I said, they're free. I just, I'm like, cool, awesome. Um, and I only had to do a couple modifications. So for one, with these plate carriers, is essentially is what you want is you want to kind of cover your, like, um, you know, uh, your chesticles here is what I like to call them. Is um, basically your heart and kind of like, you know, about out to here um, with your lungs. This one, we actually have it on, so it's, it's a large, so I, I probably would have fit a medium a lot better, but like I said, it was uh, free 50 free, so I just went with it. Um, but the thing is, I had to do some modifications, like um, I know this, uh, uh, somebody who's got a, a sewing machine, so what I did was like these, these straps were way, way too long, so 
I basically found where I can adjust it with the heavy jacket on and without a heavy jacket on and what would work. And I went with that and I cut it and I just had him redo the, the Velcro on there. And you can tell it's all kind of like stitched up and nasty looking. Um, other things too, like, you know, like the, the big Velcro uh, panels and stuff on them. I'm not a big fan of Velcro uh, just because no matter what, it always seems to kind of catch, cut the corner of your, um, your hand and stuff whenever. So... You know, I mean, with the civilian stuff, just, yeah, I mean, I, I cut all that stuff off just because, um, like, like I said, I can't stand Velcro. Uh, all I have on, on the front of it here is a uh, uh, London Bridge Tactical um, little uh, pancake 3 mag holster. Now, we can get into the specifics as far as how much ammo to carry on something. Um, my thoughts are you're going to have one in the gun and three on you, um, you know, like, and this setup's not for everything, you know what I mean? Like, an infantry guy is not going to have the same setup. A sniper is not going to have the same setup, you know what I mean? My experience is uh, just uh, crewing aircraft, so I have to kind of set things up to kind of fit what I do. But, you know, if you're in a, an accident or it's smashed in a car, smashed in a helicopter and stuff, like, you're not going to want a lot of crap on you because it's just going to get in your way. And you're not going to be, like, kicking down doors and... Uh, you know, raiding um, villages and stuff with this kind of stuff, you know what I mean? You basically need just a, a little bit of ammo to just break contact and hopefully you can get far enough away or keep, you know what I mean, like advancing people far enough away. And this is kind of where the military side of me kind of is, you know, blending with the, uh, how I set this up as a civilian. So, um, realistically, like, and I kind of have a setup that, like, I like to have, like, this is kind of underneath my bed. Um, I don't really ever kind of think I'm ever going to get to use it. It's just one of those things I just have because I'm a, like, shoot, probably a geek who just collects a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? Help, helps me sleep at night. Yeah. Right. It's, you know, like, good night's sleep is uh, pretty good. Now, um, not to kind of, you know, keep bashing on, uh, you know, keep saying Grand Thumb and stuff, is that he's done a lot of videos on this where he's got, like, radio pouches, um, like, little dispensers for chem sticks and stuff and that stuff may fit him uh, for what he does but honestly I think like I said with civilian like right now all my other all my medical stuff's in another bag but maybe a square pouch like that or something like um I saw it like on one of the things you have yeah just something like that and have it organized in a way like don't have everything hermetically sealed in a plastic bag like know if you have to rip that thing open where your tourniquets are and usually um I probably took off the tour tourniquets because I did that shooting competition over the weekend um, and put it on uh, my work one. But yeah, having one, a tourniquet available and knowing how to pro properly set up too so that, um, you know, the way they come in the packaging, uh, they, they mentioned, I'll maybe we'll go into that into a uh, different video, is how to set that up to get it on quick uh, quickly and also get it on yourself quickly because it only takes, uh, you know, like a, a, a couple seconds for you to bleed out. But anyway, I'll stuff this thing completely full with pretty much just gauze, you know what I mean? The stuff that's like um, sealed up tight, uh, pack that stuff into wounds. Uh, I think on this side I have another with a small uh, package uh, or pouch, with, I think with like an Israeli uh, bandage and maybe some other stuff uh, stuffed in there. And then um, I have, this is just like another military thing that I have uh, crossed over as a chest dart. And that's probably something civilians probably aren't going to need. But um, essentially what it is, is if you have an explosion or something like that, or you know, maybe even a car accident or something like that, and you, uh, your chest just starts to um, basically cave your lungs or something, you're sucking uh, air in through your chest and the air is getting trapped inside there and it essentially keeps like filling up that um, space that's surrounding your lungs. So basically it's just a dart to just uh, poke a hole in that. And it kind of fits right beyond the mag pouches and then Usually all those medical pouches will have like a, a pair of trauma shears cut through clothes. But essentially that's all I really think most people on the civilian side really need as far as, um, as gear. And my thoughts as far as radios, I saw you have something like that with a little antenna sticking out. Mm -hmm. As radios are great as long as who are you talking to, you know what I mean? Like if you're with a group of guys that are like-minded and stuff and thinking like that and you have some sort of setup and you know who's talking to who and you're on the right channels, the right frequencies, and then, you know, like, how are we going to do long term, you know what I mean, with batteries and stuff like that. Um, that's great and all. Um, just be having to carry radios around with me all the time in the military, I'm just like, alright, I, you know, 
I'm pretty much a loner in my civilian life. I don't really hang out with a lot of people, so I don't really have anybody to talk to, so I don't really need a radio. And that's essentially the plate carrier. Uh, one thing I did want to go over that I thought was pretty cool is originally when I got this, it, the, the way these little side panels connected to this thing was this really intricate, I call it the early 2000 mindset of you know thinking where people were just like, oh, let's have this way where it's like, the strap from here, which I also cut off, looped through here and then looped through this. And it was a whole nother panel that you had to molly through the backside of this uh, plate carrier. What I found is um, these things, I think they're, uh, I want to say Blackhawk, and they're kind of designed for molly backpacks to be able to kind of like put one of those like external like pouches on the outside. And it's, uh, but it, however, it works great just to keep these little, um, these little back panels uh, in place, or I mean the little side panels in place. So you made it a modern one like mine, basically. Yeah, I mean, that, that stuff, you know I mean? It looks like you have the, the little strap here. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I hate these big buckles, personally. Yeah. And the bigger the buckle, it just takes one dude accidentally stepping on it at the range and it cracks and you're like, oh, all right, now what I do and stuff. So I like stuff like this where, you know, maybe it's this big Velcro strap that kind of connects the thing to your front because you don't want this stuff moving around a lot because you know it makes a lot of noise and it's um, it's it's going to impede your uh, your running and stuff like that. So um, basically, three mags is what I feel you need and a bunch of medical stuff. Now you know if you want to talk in about long term, you know like all right, say hey the power goes out, you know the black helicopters come and you know people are kicking down your doors to try to get your guns, whatever it is in your head that you're thinking about doing is having kind of like uh, a lot of the ways uh, this stuff was kind of explained to me when I started getting into this stuff in the military was like um, I'm going to call it like type 1, type 2, type 3 basically what's your loadout stuff so you have your chest plate carrier you might have a gun belt and kind of go into those but then having something else too and it, like in here I normally kind of keep this thing filled with water I have this big pouch that used to be on the plate carrier and what I ended up doing with this thing was I'm uh, just kind of attaching it to the back of this one. So you can have your <coughs> extra six magazines on the back side of this. You could have, say, a GPS, you know, iodine, all, all the extra stuff that you don't, you're not going to need in an in instant can go in here. And, you know, just a small camel back like this. Um, or I like these bags a lot. They're pretty awesome. Uh, I see Chooks got one as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, this is going to be all the stuff that you don't need at any one time instantly, you're, but you may need it later on down the line. Um, and then I'll just kind of end it basically with um, kind of what my thoughts are as far as gun belts. I kind of got in the gun belt uh, craze a little bit. Um, this one was kind of one of those issued. Got these little pancake holsters. I ended up going and buying like two or three more because I like these things a lot. Um, these are nice also to have on a vest too because you can pull the magazines out very quickly. A um, little drop pouch, which I've never probably used this thing once. Um, uh, 40 millimeter grenade things and stuff, and this is kind of the military one. Um, I don't have a 40 millimeter grenade launcher as much as I'd like to. But um, these are cool to have on. You understand though, like it, I, I haven't found one plate carrier yet though with a holster like this that you're able to kind of do your smooth, cool guy um, at the range draws out of. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was, um, I didn't want to like this holster at first. Because it just looks like something that like you know, Han Solo uh, would wear, you know what I mean? Yeah. It just looked really cheesy, and I always hated drop like holsters, and didn't really like the people that wore them either. Because there are always those people that are, um, you know, back at base, you know what I mean, while you're doing all your gangster stuff. Um, but anyway, I got back into drop like holsters because um, one, I like this Safari Land a lot because I don't, it's, I wouldn't even call this thing a drop like holster. It's got this flap right here that allows you to kind of get in and out of cars easily. It's not, um, it's not a big pain to kind of like, you know, get an aircraft with. And it keeps the gun up high enough, but the, the important thing is it keeps the gun far enough away so that it kind of clears uh, an armor a plate carrier or a flak vest or something like that. So that if you did need the gun quickly, um, you can get to it pretty quickly and stuff just because it gives you that added added space between uh, your body to kind of be able to transition between medical pouches and all the other stuff that people carry on the side of their plate carriers. And what gun goes in there? Um, this is just one for an M9. I actually oh, probably okay. will try to uh, find one of these for, I don't know, I like these a lot now and stuff. Mm -hmm. I see you have one very similar for your Glock on your belt. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just another one. This is a uh, belt that I got. 
um, just a Glock holster and a Glock in it. I have one mag pouch, and this is kind of more for just, you know, like my civilian kind of shooting and three gun stuff. And that's a 17? Um, yeah, it's a full size. Um, and then I like these Blackhawk uh, little pancake holsters like this. And I don't even call them pancake holsters. I like them because, you know, like the Kydex holsters are all the cool uh, um, rave right now. But this one takes up a lot less space. And those, uh, you know, those Kydex ones tend to be really, really wide. So you need like a large area to fill up. And mm -hmm. um, I'm less is more kind of is my uh, kind of my concept on that. So anyway, that's what, that's what I got. Kind of yard sale all over the place with stuff. Okay. What do you got? Well, as always, mine mine is uh, ridiculous. Uh, I know Do It Right was making fun of battle belts, but to my uh, to my defense, I was using my battle belt uh, kind of like what he did. I wanted to do three gun. I didn't end up having time to do three gun, so I just wanted to. If I was going to do three gun, I'd do the tactical competition. So I just wanted to have fun and do tactical stuff. So I got the AR five hundred uh, side plate or plate carrier. How much um, do they weigh? Oh, they're super heavy with yeah. these things. That's why I took the back one out and used it to uh, to do tests with because it was way too heavy with both of them in there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get, really, you don't even need a back one, really, for, for civilian stuff. That, that's only if you're in a war zone, really, you need a back one. But you don't think I, that the back plate kind of does a counterbalance as far it as... It probably does. Yeah. It probably does. So I'll so probably go with something... With full mags on the front end. Yeah, for sure. I'll go with something lighter and, and at least put a lighter plate in there. But... I didn't realize, uh, uh, a viewer told me I could take off the buckles, and I, since I have the cummerbund, I could just use that, but... Uh, uh, the ones on the side here? Yeah, I'll show you something even more ridiculous I'm going to do. So I've got these, and inside, and these are like from, from military armor, army armor, and inside they've, they've got these Kevlar strike plates, and I am going to somehow attach them. It's even got a deltoid protector and they're like oh this is even armored so I am going to probably just tie it and jury rig it so I have this ridiculous side armor that's going to be even heavier but yeah but I'm just doing it for the fun of it be ridiculous but yeah that's going to add to the weight but I am going to I don't know if I could do it with it looks like I might be able to do it with some of the molly you I could probably will actually get just plates uh or not plates but uh they, they make panels and we'll break, but we were talking about, yeah, I'm going to try to connect these, and I, there's got to be a way, but that'll be a fun project for me, to connect these side plates on there. Um, and like he was saying, I got the three mags up front, um, so that that's all there is to that. The, the helmet, like I said, is kind of ridiculous, like I'm not going to really need the helmet, it was just something I'd like to have. Um, the battle belt, I just put together for the heck of it. I, I, I was doing it for three gun, and... Um, it's going to have to totally be redone because it's got this ridiculous pancake knife on there. Um, a dry pad or something in there too. Yeah, but um, it needs this. I got this AFAC, so it needs the medical kit. Um, I do have a VHF radio, mainly because I want to to tar and I like the way the antenna looks sticking <laughs> out there. No, but it is nice. It's got some more... Uh, um, I'm doubling up on some stuff because i got a, uh, another first aid kit right there. But it, I do have... A lot of uh, holsters for the Glock 19, I mean, uh, mags, um, and there's three more here, so it's probably overkill. Uh, no. No.